I think another reason it's the long history. So many corps uh, in Italy, but also not only in Italy. Uh, you know, you have many corps also in Germany or Austria, right. Or, right. or and generally, corps have a, many corp, corps have a quality problem. So so. Here, it's also the, the history starts quite early. I mean, the corp, uh, the corps in Alto Adige are mostly around 100 years and more. So, also we have, we was Talano was founded in 1893. So, so this long long tradition, uh, it helps also to grow in in this time, okay. and and also the mentality of the people. It was always to grow, to understand, to go on. Uh, many corps are, are founded after after the Second World War. Uh, in this time, the people don't have money, nothing. So everyone tried to make quantity to 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 find the big pool sure. to sell wine. Sure. So the corps, when you look, for example, Alto Adige and the close region, uh, close area, it's Trentino. The corps, we have here many corps, many smaller ones, between 150 and, okay, we have one big one with 500 hectares, but you have some corps in, in, in what have thousands of hectares, so 1,500 of hectares. Okay. So, so the size is also a reason, the history is a reason, and for me also the terroir is a reason. And, and sure also, I think the mentality when you visit Alto Adige, you see it's a little bit, maybe a little bit Switzerland mentality. No, to 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 work hard to make the best. It's it's a few maybe a few reasons what helps to increase to increase quality. Okay, I'm going to put up a picture of the winery, and if you could talk a little bit about where you're located, and then we'll I'll put up some more pictures of the soil, and, and uh, we could talk about the soil as well, and, and just the the, the topography. Yes, yes. <laughs> Terlano, Terlano uh, we are in Alto Adige. So Alto Adige, it's, um, uh, you can, you can, it's the northern uh, area in, in Italy. We are in the mountains, in, in the Alps, close to the Dolomites. Um, the latitude is a little bit like south, south part of Côte d'Or. So to have an idea. So, um, but the climate is, it's, it's, it's here different. We have a little bit more protected climate from the mountains. We have huge valleys was going down. Uh, now you can see it perfectly. It's a big valley what's going down to the south. So the warm winds coming up to, to uh, this area. But we have the, cl the cool climate. Then we have the high mountains around what are the mountains going up until 3,500 no, meters, sorry, in feet, about 10,000 feet high. And so we have the cool air what pressed down after the sunset and refreshing the area. So this position from this picture, it's, it's about, it's about 1,500 feet high. So we have the the vineyards were going up to the to the mountains until the vineyards going up until 2,700, 2,800 feet, and and the you see here in the center you see the village of Talano. Then Talano, it's not only the name of the winery, and it's all and the name of the of the appellation. It's it's also the name of the blend. But the the village Talano is situated. In the center of a volcano, so we have in this around the walls, the mountain walls or the the rocks. What you see on the side, right. and the, especially on the left side, that's 100% volcanic rock. And so also, uh, we don't have calcareous influence there. It's very rich on silicate, a little bit like the silicate level is a little bit like in with you may with the silex. But it's it's a different it's a different the silicate is the same but 
silex. It's a combination between uh, calcareous stone and silicate. And here we have the combination between volcanic and, and uh, silicate. We have between 55 to 60 percent uh, silicate in the soil. So it's it's a lightly soil. It's a very poor soil. It's it drains a lot, and and so it's generally, uh, especially for Talano, uh, was this the lucky situation? Uh, maybe in the past the people don't like this, but the yields are normally 30 percent less than in in what is normal in this area. So we have this poor soil. And uh, generally, you find in Alto Adige more calcareous soil. And Terlano, it's a little bit the Appalachian Terlano, the classic Appalachian of Terlano, what is only 180 hectares. This, this, classic, uh, this classic Appalachian is, is uh, you have here this special soil system, and is also the reason why we have a separate Appalachian. And uh, this uh, 60, uh, between 50 and 60 percent silicate, it's silicate is like glass. It's like it's not a mineral what you can have uh, uh, rich, uh, you, what keep water or, or give uh, helps the roots. It's only stabilizing the soil. And this low, this poor soil helps in the in the past. Maybe the the growers in, in especially in the 50s 60s don't like uh, helps to have a high quality but the yield was quite low exactly and that's also the reason why Talano has we have today uh, uh, incredible stock of old vintages then this this terroir situation give us give us this this also very these white wines with an incredible aging potential too yeah, I recall myself, there's a friend who has a restaurant up in the north suburb of Chicago, and this goes back maybe 25 years ago, but when I was first starting to learn about Italian wines, especially the whites, he pulled out a, a Terlaner from, I want to say something like 1991 or something, and it was just, here, here the wine was, you know, at least 20 years old, I don't remember exactly how old, but I was amazed at how fresh that wine was, and that, that was the first great aged Italian wine I'd had and I realized that these wines could age. Italian wines at that time were, as you know, thought of as very simple, but uh, this one had such great complexity and, and, and such great freshness. And uh, I think that's, that's, a, that's a key to your, you know, one of the, the, the real key words, if you will, for Cantina Terlano is the, the long-term aging for the whites and reds, but especially the whites. Yes, we, we it's 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 also interesting, but we have not this high acidity level like Germany. Our wines have quite uh, balanced. We have a total acidity around five point six to maybe six grams of total acidity. That's not really high. It's not seven, eight, nine grams like right, right. like Riesling. No, or Burgundy. When we compare with Burgundy, we have generally one one gram less acidity than burgundy uh, we have a little bit warmer climate there and so and and uh, so it's it's quite what's for me i'm study also enologist and i work six years to germany and when i move back to my home but i thought it is my home where i grow okay. up and i study and uh Talano was like a sleeping beauty at this time it was very close and 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 uh I remember when I started here and in the 90s, uh, 94, was only sold around 100 kilometers around, was very, very, uh, very regional located. And uh, I remember I come to this winery and I want to help only for one harvest time. And I remember around July, 26 years ago, we, we see all these old bottles and we start to, to say, from my idea was maybe ninety percent uh, oxidized, but right, right, right. then we yeah. we open fifty <laughs> vintages, go back to nineteen twenty seven, wow. and we we don't find okay. Someone was more evolved. You have some uh, maybe some some uh, some evolved nose, but some I remember 
59, 61. These are incredible fresh vintages on this time, and it's blowing my mind. And so I decide to 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 change my rule. And, <laughs> and but yeah. my my friend starts before me to be the first enologist, so I don't have uh, I I don't have a chance to to work in 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 uh, like a first enologist. So I I start to to look more to 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 show what what is Terlano like a brand ambassador. I remember I was in 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 the end of nineties, so my first time I go to the U.S. and I was also in Chicago. Uh, I remember and um, and um, yes and and uh, and we start to show the potential of this of this terroir also and also mm -hmm. uh, the potential of Terlano. But uh, it's. I think it's today. Uh, okay, we 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 look to to make great wines, yes. But we also try to 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 keep keep a bal balance, and we want to make we what we don't think about red or whites. We want to make high complex white wines. What can what you can drink now, but also what can keep for what you can keep for more than twenty years. And uh, better 50 years. Okay. Yeah, I was reading on your, it's a great story, by the way. I, I love the story about how you all of a sudden found these, these old wines. And it's like, I, you know, I think I'll stay. So I love that story. Yeah, it's, 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 and, and it's, it's fun, but it's, it's also great. I, I was, I made part of the German analogies when I studied, or when I worked in Germany, I studied before. And I, I visit Bordeaux and I visit Burgundy in this time when I was young also. I have a little idea. Maybe I don't understand Talano from the beginning or not. I understand a little bit, but some terroirs to understand, you need minimum four or five years. And uh, yes, it's, it's, for me, it's always an incredible terroir. And uh, I think uh, great, great terroirs can be, correct human faults so generally you will find always basically the terroir it's the most important thing okay you can destroy uh, you can destroy quality you can destroy but when you when you have a, a general uh, a gentle vinification uh, with 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 uh, with feeling you you a great terroir all time coming out that's a great statement I, I, as a writer someone who's been writing for a long time but i think just anybody who's in the wine industry to hear you say great terroir can correct human faults i think that's a that's a brilliant statement and I, you know it's i, I know I, I talked about this with a friend in piemonte that's, and my, that's my opinion that's okay my opinion. well I, I will quote you on that don't worry about that <laughs> yeah yeah okay. so, um Let's start talking about the wines, and I know you have yeah, sure. classic level. I don't, I don't remember the term you used. Gewurz, Germiner, Pinot Bianco, you know, and, and many of the greats. Yes, uh, the, so about generally we have uh, Talano. It's a history white wine uh, winery. You need to know uh, in the history, Altoja was has also quite big red wine production uh, in the fifties. But Talano was historically always a white wine uh, located production. Today we have about 70% white wines okay. and 30% red wines. Um, uh, you need to know after 1850, uh, after Filoxa uh, changed a little bit, it's coming in specially varieties like Pinot Bianco, like Chardonnay, like Sauvignon Blanc. And these are by Talano uh, the main varieties, what uh, made also the blend Talano. Okay. But, so what we talk later about, and uh, we have uh, absolutely we produce Gewürztraminer, what is typical for the region, also Pinot Gris and Pinot Grigio, mm -hmm. and uh, a little bit in the highest areas, in the highest uh, altitude. Uh, I mean, by around uh, between 2,600 and 2,800 feet, uh, we we uh, have. Planted Müller Thurgau, but this is a great Müller Thurgau. It's a great, but neat, cool, very cool uh, uh, climate, and so it's 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 Müller Thurgau, especially in this in this level. Uh, 
uh, generally uh, the Pino Bianco it's it's located by by uh, about the best the best expression it's between 1500 and uh, 1800 feet and uh, then we have our Grand Cru of Pino Bianco and generally we do in, in the tradition line or classic line we made the wines without malolactic fermentation with a good aging potential too not not for 20 years but 10 years is also it's also a good thing also when you open a bottle you can keep it for a week or more in in your fridge without uh, argon you put only the the cork then and the wines are very stable now generally and um, you will some in it's very aromatic and and um, it's it's typical grape too it's it's but here it's different to other areas it's very dry style of people I mean it's right. typical for the region and also typical typical for us okay so well let's talk about the the selections and the single vineyards so the wines that I tasted recently let's start with one of my favorites yes I, I think I have mine the fridge, okay so all right I go ahead take a bottle up. So we'll, we'll start with the, the Quartz Sauvignon, because this is the freshest wine I have. This is a 2018 vintage. Yes, it's, it's, we make the... So. So Sauvignon Blanc, it's, it's a special story at the, uh, Terlano. Mm -hmm. Terlano, um, when, when after I, Tell you before, uh, we had um, we had in in um, in our region after, especially in the we talk about the Lano, the Lano area. It's coming after Philoxera, Pinot Bianco, Chardonnay, also Sauvignon Blanc. What in the first time we used it for the blend. You need to know we have the vineyards are all blended together, the different varieties. Uh, so so we made one uh, uh, one white. And this was the Terlana uh, blend. And later we start to bottle separately uh, Pinot Bianco, uh, Sauvignon Blanc, and quite later Chardonnay. And Sauvignon Blanc, we start, uh, we have today, we have a special uh, Terlano clones, what we selected. The, uh, the Terlano clones arrives a little bit later than French clones. And it has a little bit different aromatic. And um, today we taste Quartz 2018. That's a selection. So selection means 18 we released in, in March. But this is a wine that needs quite, quite, quite time. Well, the other whites I have are from 2017, but since this is 2018. Yes. We, I, we I, do. I found that, that to be a vintage that's just extraordinary for white wines in Italy. Tell us about that growing season. 18, 18 was a was, was, uh, very complex vintage. Also, Quartz 18 for us, it's in the last maybe, uh, yes, maybe it's with 16 and, and 2010, I think the most complex vintage. Okay. 16 was also very, very interesting. Uh, for 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 us also for whites for reds too and for whites too. Uh, 18 it's it's also it's a very complex vintage. Uh, quartz is vinified. It's vinified up uh, uh, fifty percent stainless steel and fifty percent in oak big oak cask. Big oak cask means uh, big oak. It's three thousand liter. It's this cask. Uh, it's French oak. But it's not new. It's it's uh, it's now the the cask are about seven eight years old. Oh, really? Okay, that old. Okay. So so we look generally uh, what for us it's more important. It's it's um, okay. We like for a good nose, but for us it's much more important the mouth feeling. So we have generally we try to make a lot of batonnage in in oak also in stainless steel. Uh, by Sauvignon Blanc, we, we don't make malolactic fermentation, but we want to keep the freshness, we want to, to keep the precise nose. And, uh, but we do a lot of batonnage, the wine staying about uh, 10, 11 months on, on the yeast. 
and and we and, and after we bottled quartz and we released uh, the quartz after about one and a half years after uh, the harvest. Right. And of course, so quartz has a very special salty feeling. Okay, and that's the terroir combination between the Terlano terroir and the clones of Sauvignon Blanc of Terlano. Okay, so this 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 uh, soil with what is so rich on on silicate give a special mouth texture to our Sauvignon Blancs. Uh, it's a little we we made two ones. We make the Winkel, mm -hmm. what is more fresher. And from young or young or vineyards okay. and quartz, what is we have here vineyards over twenty years, and right. you need to uh, you need to know generally the grape, the grape, and and then wine, the wine changed after ten years. Uh, you lose you lose especially when vineyards going older. You lose more primary flavors. In, in the wine later right. and and uh, the roots going deeper you have more more mineral texture when when you have older older vineyards and this is very extreme by Sauvignon Blanc I remember I stay I was a little story I was uh, close uh, by one experience to New York and uh, I have my my place close to Claudie Bay and I, I talk with the winemaker and and he told me in New Zealand, uh, some wineries uh, replant Sauvignon Blanc after 10 years. Mm. But you, you, you don't, you lose this very strong aromatic flavors what some people like by New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc. Right. And, and so you need, you need to do it, you, you need to do different. We, uh, by quartz, we look, we want to have 20 years. It's not. It's not old for us. That's the. Year. We have also uh, vineyards what are 40 years, but the youngest what going in quartz are 20. So it's oh, going between great. 20 and 40 years. That's great vineyards. to know. One of, one of the things. And, I to, go ahead. Make another statement. Or yes, I want to say also quartz is not a single vineyard wine. Okay. Then by Terlano we have. You need to know we have the hills. The village is on a hill by about uh, uh, 900 feet, and we we have the mountains. What going up until 2,700? So quartz, it's blended between the hills and the mountains. So we have the mountain vineyards are about uh, about 1,500 feet high, and the hills are about uh, eight nine eight eight hundred feet about high. And so we have the the richness. The richness from the from the hills and the freshness from the mountains. So always, but the, it's hundred percent the same basic rock. It's always the rock uh, from the soil. The name it's quartz porphyric, and is also the name of the rock of this volcanic rock, of this special volcanic rock by by Talano. Okay, I've had this wine for many vintages and. Um, what I love about the wine is not only what you mentioned about you want the mouthfeel of the wine. I mean, and there's definite structure in here for, for, for cellar potential. But I love Sauvignon in general, especially for Malta Wadaji and for Yuli. They're very specific. And, but so many examples are so herbaceous. And they almost, you know, tend toward the extreme of asparagus. And I've never had that in, in the quartz. It's, it's always got, it certainly has some, some notes of pepper and some, and, and chervil and things like that, but there's always plenty of fruit there. And I, I found in, in the 18, just you had, you had yellow pepper, you had bosque pear, uh, just amazing aromatics of this wine. And, and of course, backed up by that structure. So, and this 18, as you said, is a great vintage. The 17 received Tre Bicchieri from Gamba Rosso. And I know next year they'll review the 18. So sometimes they change, they want to give you a different Tre Bicchieri 
for a different wine, but <laughs> so, so they, they, they sometimes don't know what you want to do to give it right. for fallback or Novadomus or, or quartz. So sometimes they change. So, so it's, it's not, but, but 18, 18 for me, it's a, it's, it's a fantastic vintage, but yeah. you know, sometimes it's, 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 uh, it's, 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 but quartz, the problem by quartz sometimes is when you taste, when you have this in a blind tasting too early, it's like a Riesling. He's quite close. Okay. So, so quartz starts now slowly to open. Op he need, he need uh, one year of bottle aging for quartz is nothing. So when he has two, one and a half, two years, the wine starts to going uh, out to, to have, especially also in the nose, going much more complex. He's, he's sometimes so vibrant and so reductive in, in from the potential from the soil that that's is it's it's the wine what when you taste it after after a few months of embottling it's a disaster so I don't <laughs> taste it but I go nervous when I taste it after after a few months so you, you need, I need also for me for myself to to wait a little bit and then I, I start to touch him. Yes, after ten months of bottle aging, okay. then then slowly, but it's fantastic when you when you can drink it after one and a half two years, and and perfect after a few after three four years of bottle aging, then it's uh, it's 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 quite 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 fantastic. Yeah, that's great to know. That means I'll have to pick up a few more bottles and and drink them in a few years. So. Um, <laughs> yes, yes, it's it's also what you like to drink. Absolutely, right, exactly. Tom. It's it's. Uh, I'm I'm generally I like, generally I like very old stuff. No, like so. Uh, I I buy I buy yesterday a little Bordeaux from uh, eighty three, but I think it's it's an interesting vintage. It's not so famous, but 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 it's 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 a uh, it's a very interesting vintage by Bordeaux, and so enterprises are not incredibly high but generally i like a little bit old stuff generally i like to drink wines what have minimum 10 years and that's i know when i drink two bottles i feel perfect you know <laughs> <laughs> it takes two bottles <laughs> sometimes <laughs> maybe right. one bottle all maybe right one bottle of champagne and one bottle well, of there water. you go yeah, I, I, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll stick with the champagne so um, yes I love champagne too. Right. One last point about the um, the Trey Vicchiari was that, as we both said, you know, sometimes they give it to the you know Bianca, which we'll taste in a minute. Sometimes the the parts, sometimes something else. So, number one, that's a nice problem to have. I know there's a few other wineries that do the same thing. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. But, but my point was that if the 17 parts receive Trey Vicchiari, this easily should win Trey Vicchiari. Now, whether it does or not, I don't know, but it'll certainly be in the finals because it's. The wine is spectacular. So, um, I just had one question here from uh, one of the participants. She wants to know who's the importer in the United States, and of course, that's Banville, B-A-N-V-I-L-L-E, who has been your importer for many years, right? Sorry, Tom, I don't understand what she had asked about the, the, about the the importer in the United States, which is Banville. Yes, yeah, Banville. Banville and you, yes. You've been working with them for many years, correct? Yes, yes. When when um, um, when when uh, when Benville starts, we work. We stay now together uh, many fifteen years or more. It's, That's great. It's, uh, they, yeah. yes, uh, Having been on that side of the business, I know how rare that is. So that's that's terrific. So it's great teamwork. Let's. Uh, we like we like to be with one partner. We don't great. like so much to change. No. So like I'm here from twenty six years. Also also we like to be. We like a long relationship, but it's also quite complicated exactly. to, to, to explain this, this complex that we are too. And we make, uh, I know Leah, Leah uh, she's, she's uh, I work with her and she's fantastic. That's great. Let's move on because we're, we're moving along in time here. We have about five more lines to, to talk about. Yes, yes, <laughs> sorry. sorry uh, That's all right. No, we had to talk about a lot. So let's talk about the Vorberg. Yes, yes, Vorberg, uh, it's, uh, what I want to say, Vorberg is, is it's, 
it's it's the name it's the name of the area from the high from the high areas of Delano means mountain back back uh, the park you know we speak this uh, um, both languages German and and and, uh, and Italian and we have all German names so my name is Klaus not really Italian and also the name of the of the of the villages are German and also here Vorberg it means mountain so these are vineyards in the mountains and um, here especially we talk uh, we have vineyards what starts I talked before about between uh, 900 feet and going up until 2,800 feet wow. but the best part of Pino Bianco it's between this 1,500 feet and and um, and 1,900 feet. That's our Grand Cru from Pino Bianco. Right. And just a picture of it here I just posted. So. Yes, that's that's Vorbach. Yes, yes. You can see it's extremely steep and it's, it's that's it's south exposition. Also quite warm, but in the night we have the cool air from pressing pressing down and. Uh, I think uh, that's an incredible example of Pino Bianco, but generally, you know, Pino Bianco, maybe it's not so famous about for high quality, but you need to work extremely, extremely hard in the vineyard. So we, we take, we cut every bunch in the middle by hand. We reduce yield a lot Then Pino Bianco genetically like to produce a little bit too much. But when you don't control perfectly the yield, uh, Pino Bianco sometimes going very simple. So we, we work here with extremely less yield. So uh, vinification, it's extremely traditional, means uh, we, we uh, vinify this in very old cask, big oak cask, 40 years old big oak cask. And we have 12 months of yeast contact in, in big oak. And then another six mount in, in, in cement cast. And so totally it's 18 mounts yeast contact. And after, after this, we bottle the wine and then we start to sell it after two years. So it's, it's, uh, we can call it also reserva. Okay. And this is really created for a possibly extremely long aging too. You can drink four back young too. It's fresh, it's mineral, but it's also fantastic when you drink it after 10 years. And this is and a 2017 vintage. Is this 2017, it's the current vintage now. And it's not, it's, it's also what, what we, we fermented the, 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 this white wines like a little bit red wines. So fermentation temperature is like, it's like Pinot Noir. It's not, it's not cool. It's quite warm, then we want to keep special very stable flavors we don't want too much uh, uh, fresh flavors we want a little bit the stronger flavors like a little bit like red wine from the vinification concept and then yes a lot of batonnage in this time we like the yeast we like the yeast contact but yeast is also when you drink, when you like champagne, you know what happens, no? Right, right. When you have yeast contact, you have a different texture, you have a different balance, especially when you keep it uh, quite long. And, and so we, we have this big tradition. So Tom, we do also this special, uh, what we don't taste today, but we make also white wines with 10 years of yeast contact. And so that's, one of the, the basic elements at the Lano yeast contact time and, and, and very gentle vinification. So means we don't like oak influence. So the cask are 40 years old. And so we, we look, Pino Bianco needs, it's, it's not like Chardonnay. So he, he's delicate, unique. Uh, it's also difficult to work with small oak. So I don't, it's not, I don't like wines with small oak like Burgundy. I love Burgundy too, so. Of course. But for Talano, for our terroir, big oak casks are fantastic. Well, I know that Pinot Bianco is sort of a, if not a signature variety in Alto Watershed, sort of the kind of 
everyday variety. And I mean that by the fact that there's so much of it planted and so many producers make it and a glass of Pinot Bianco at lunch is pretty standard, but this is obviously not an ordinary wine. And I love Pinot Bianco. I would say this has become my favorite Pinot Bianco in all of Alto Adige, and I, I think it's the best. It's certainly the best I've ever had. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. We, we're working hard for this. Okay. <laughs> you do it. We want to be the best. We want to okay. make the best Pinot Bianco in the world. So okay. that's our... our <laughs> Well, you're doing a fine job, and I think if you stick with it for another two, three years, you'll get there. So, yeah. <laughs> let's, thank you. Let's, okay, let's move a complimente. Let's move on to uh, one of your really treasured whites, and that's the Nova Domus. Yes, Nova Domus. It's it's we talk about the basic history of Talano, the the the, the roots, the roots of Talano. The Nova Domus is the Talano blend, and the Talano blend. It's an appellation, it's a DOC blend, it's, but we do, we made this blend since uh, from 1893. And Novodomus, it's the old Latin name of the Terlano area. And uh, the, the blend, it's, it's, it's uh, we have also in the Novodomus, the backbone is the Pinot Bianco with 60% of, of, uh, of the parts, 30% is Chardonnay, and 10% is Sauvignon Blanc. Okay. Uh, the vinification here, it's also also the, the same like by Pinot Bianco Forbach. So we do, oh, sorry, I forgot. We made also by Pinot Bianco Forbach, we do malolactic fermentation. Also by Novodomus, we made malolactic fermentation. And the size of the cask here is a little bit smaller. So a uh, little bit, it's, the sides by Vorberg are 7,000 liters, quite big, 7, 000, precisely 7,500 liters. By Novodomus, we use a little bit smaller ones, it's 3,000 liters. So we, we, but here we have generally more, more uh, extremely old vintages, uh, sorry, extremely old varieties with a very less production. So we have generally a higher concentration by Novodomus in the wine. It's, it's, it's a little bit higher extract. Uh, and so we keep it in a little bit smaller cask. So we have a little bit more microoxidation with the smaller cask. Uh, generally, it's, um, it's, it's Novodomus and Forberg. These are, I think, the both wines with, the, with an incredible aging potential. So Novodomus, it's it's uh, from and when we see the old the old vintages, what we have in the cellar, mostly we have Talana, the blend, and and Pinot Bianco and 100% Pinot Bianco. Also, here you feel the texture, you feel. The saltiness, it's, um, that's the Pinot Bianco. The Pinot Bianco is it's more, give the, this blend more the, the vertical way. So, and the Chardonnay give him a little bit roundness, this 30% Chardonnay. And Sauvignon Blanc, but that's a very less aromatic part, what we used for the Novodomus. So it's, it's, it's a very balanced nose also. We don't look to, to have uh, a dominant uh, Sauvignon Blanc part in the blend. So, so we like, a little bit typical is this apricot nose for the Novodomus. Okay, and now that you mentioned the saltiness, I, I picked that up now. I opened the wine last night and I'm trying it again, but it really stands out. So uh, of, these th of these three whites, the Vorberg, the Quartz, and the Novodomus, what are the production levels on these and which is the best selling? So, for me, um, the in the moment, the best selling depends a little bit of the markets too. In Europe, it's quartz, it's quartz the best selling wine. Uh, generally, for me, the, the best, the best uh, but for aging potential, Novodomus and Vorberg. When we look at the Italian market, so it's the best seller Vorberg. 
Okay. But drawback is also from the price range a little bit less, and is it's maybe not so rich like Novodomus and and Quartz, um, but Forback is an incredible food wine. When you yes. have the, a very complex dish, especially, I mean, an example, you, you, you need the wine to put it together with artichokes. For artichokes a la Romana, you know, the bitter tannins of artichokes, it's quite difficult to handle. Forback can balance this in a fantastic okay. way. He's, he's, he's uh, an incredible, uh, incredible food wine. Generally, and uh, for me, maybe the strongest aging potential has the Novodomus. For me, for my opinion. Then, right. then after it's how what you like. Uh, uh, generally, quartz. It's he he has this extremely saltiness, and the people like this. Okay. It's a very unusual Sauvignon Blanc, especially for the mouth feeling. Right. Well, you so, make so these are three, three. Yes. To say what is bad or what is every everyone has a very different uh, identity and and uh, and uh, but all these wines we sell it in allocation so it's not that's uh, right right we finish this uh, it's all every market take an allocation maybe the people call me a few times more for quartz but uh, the wines are always sold out before before we put it on the market. So it's... You're, that's that's great. It's, every market take his, his quantity, yes. How many bottles do you produce of these wines on average? Okay, so uh, in... in um, I need to, to, to think in cases, but we... we, we, okay, we either way. We okay. produce, we produce, okay, by Novodomus, we produce about uh, 2,000 cases, Novodomus. Okay. Right. By Forberg, uh, uh, 5,000 and 4,000 by quartz. Okay. So it depends also from the vintages. We have also vintages with less and, and sure. it's plus minus 1,000 cases sometimes. Sure. Not by Novodomus, but uh, maybe plus minus 500 and here plus minus 1,000. It depends of the vintage okay. also. Just for right now, let's have you move that Nova Domus bottle because it's blocking your face just a little bit. If you could just move that bottle. Yeah, sure. Sorry. Perfect. Okay, no problem. And before I move to the reds, um, you mentioned artichoke, pairing with, with, with that wine, or with that food. When I visited with you, just when I was leaving, and I, that's back when I was driving, had a rent a car, and I'm too chicken now to drive around Italy, but that's when I had some guts. Um, and I went to my car and you said, and you pointed out that right behind the winery, there was a man, this was in the springtime, I think it was in, in May, maybe right around the, the Italy time. Yeah. There, was, there was a farmer selling local white asparagus, which was fantastic. And I took it to another producer and we, we fixed it for lunch, which was great. But what, what would you recommend pairing with the, the local white asparagus? My uh, white asparagus, it's it's it depends how you made it. No, when you made white asparagus with a little olive oil and a little bit Parmesan cheese. Okay. So I I say it's fantastic uh, Pinot Bianco for that. But when when you eat, we have a typical dish what we what we what we eat. But this is yes, we have a small production of white asparagus, about 15 hectares, not big. But the, all restaurants in the season made everything with white asparagus, made, uh, made uh, risotto, made um, uh, white asparagus, uh, only white asparagus with, with a special smoked ham uh, with, with herbs and potatoes and boiled potatoes and a special sauce. That it's called the, uh, the sauce of Bolzano. It's quite a rich sauce with egg, with, with cooked egg and herbs. Mm -hmm. And in this case, when you, you have these flavors from the herbs, you, it's fantastic with Sauvignon Blanc. So, so traditionally, with this classic historic dish, it's the, best, it's the best match with Sauvignon Blanc. But when you prepare at home boiled white asparagus with, with a good olive oil and a little bit of Parmesan, Personally, I like to drink a glass of Pinot Bianco. But when I have this special 
a local traditional dish with 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 with, with this rich sauce with with egg and herbs. So I like to put uh, put also. Uh, I like to drink Sauvignon Blanc. That's great. You're making my mouth water, and I'm sure everybody <laughs> who's watching is thinking the same thing. But I have one quick question before we move on to the reds. And one of the yes. Events. Why don't you to compare the two Sauvignon, the, the Vorburg and the Winkel, compare them in terms of production level and just in terms the, of the Pinot Bianco and uh, the Sauvignon. You mean the Sauvignon, the the, the, the Winkel and the and the ah the Winkel and the Quartz. The Quartz. I said Vorburg. I'm sorry. The Quartz. Right. Ah uh, yes. Yes, Winkel. It's also a complex Sauvignon, but we do. It's not an entry level. It's it's. But twenty percent of the Winkel, we we put it also in big oak cask. We do also batonnage. We have also a quite in this case a quite higher fermentation temperature. We look for good flavors, yes, but we look also for the mouth feeling. Winkel is a little bit. We released Winkel earlier but we used also the younger vineyards for Winkel. So he has a little bit more power in the nose, but also good power in the mouth, not like Quartz. Quartz, quartz is, it's, it's, it's about old, old, very old vineyards. So it's a bottle what needs much more time to, to are ready to drink. Winkel it's ready earlier. Can, you can keep Winkel also for 10 years. It's not a big, it's not okay. a problem. But Winkel is a little bit, it's, it's, it's a little bit more elegant to drink. It's also a little bit easier to drink, but has always a very long, a very long finish, a very long mineral finish too. Quartz is, it's a little bit extreme style of Sauvignon Blanc. It's maybe when you drink from Didier Dagenon, the Silex and the Pour Sun. Okay, great. We have about 10 minutes left, so let's... Uh, yes, that's okay, okay. All right, okay. So that's all right. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. You make my job easy. You have long answers. So let's... Uh, the Grand Rosé we'll skip for now. Uh, okay, let's, yes. Just for the sake of time, we'll maybe mention at the end if we have a minute. But let's yes. move on to the Pinot Noir, the Reserve of Montecol. Yes, okay. That's the 17 vintage. Okay, so uh, you... you we have a, a quite warm climate, so, so you need to know that we grow Pinot Noir only in the mountains. Pinot Noir, from the history, it's, it's, was, uh, it's also a very old variety, what we grow more than 100 years in, in, in this region. But we have a problem in the 50s, the growers plant specially Pinot Noirs for sparkling production. So um, we, we start in the 90s to change the clones. So we have today, we have, uh, we have uh, French clones and we start to have quite interesting Pinots in this region, but we have a fantastic uh, terroir for Pinots too. Now the vineyards are between 25, 30 years, and now we start to make Pinot Noirs with, with a good deepness too. So we, we start to taste Monticol. We have a competition in Italy about Pinot Noirs and uh, Montecols take the second place this year for the best Pinot Noirs in Italy. And I think it's a good, it's a fantastic example between freshness and, and, uh, and structure. This is, I think Pinot Noir is one of the reds what are very interested to produce in this cool area like Alto Adige. This is also 2017 vintage. I get not yes. this beautiful cherry and a little bit of spice like cardamom, but even a little bit of raspberry in this wine. Yes, and, and we, we start also to put a little bit um, um, stems in, in for fermentation. And we, we try, maybe in the past, we, the Pinot Noirs in Aguadis are a little overripe sometimes. But in the last 10 years, we, we, I think we, we learn about a lot about Pinot Noir and in the last 10 years we growing, we growing uh, by quality in Pinot Noirs in, in this region generally. And I think it is a fantastic and especially in the price range of this kind of Pinot Noir, uh, it's, I think it's it's fantastic, no? Also, but we 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 by we have some white wines what are very expensive. But by Pinot Noir, we need to 
create also uh, 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 to that's especially the market understand how high it's this quality of Pinot Noir in, in this region. And so you can find very, very good ones to a reasonable price like Monte Col. It's okay. maybe one of, of the best price quality wine what we make. Okay. And, and I think people too also, you know, they think of Alto and they know the white wines, they may not know the... Yes, yes, yes. What especially the Lano, the people know us especially right. for white. Right. Yes. Yeah, and, and, and they don't, might not know what a great region Alto Warage is for Pinot Noir. For, you know, yes, yes. Well, yeah. I, I'm agree absolutely. Okay, let's move on to the Lagrine reserve. Of the yes, Pinot. sorry, I need to open the bottle fast. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> we have six no, Lagrine, Lagrine is it's 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 uh, it's our indigenous indigenous grape variety. What we produce more more than 600 years in this region. You need to know Lagrine in 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 the history was vinified only uh, like rosé, especially in the 50s. But the people in this time don't like to have too, too heavy, too rich wines. Then the people drink, drink so much wine. And so the people like to drink more very elegant drinkable wines. But, but Lagrein, it's, it's a grape uh, uh, what give us very interesting uh, reds. It's, it's uh, with dark color. It's with a little bit spiciness, but with a extremely gentle tannin balance, I think. And it's also a variety that give us white wine, uh, sorry, give us red wine with a, with a good aging potential too. The area of Lagrain, it's especially in the lower hills, but it's a, it's a variety what needs a lot of temperature for ripeness. It's different to Pinot Noir. Pinot Noir is by 1,800 feet. And Lagrain is by about uh, 600, 700, 800 feet located. Especially this, it's but uh, the, uh, the Greece, area of Greece, it's close to the Talano area. It's not on the hills, it's more close to the Bolzano city. And there it's, it's, it's a very hot climate too. Okay. And on, on the Montecol Pinot Noir and the, the Greece, Lagrain, uh, these are aged in, it's a combination, right, of large and small barrels? Yes, exactly. Okay. We, don't, we, we don't use 100% small oak, but we use Baric for red wines generally. And, and we, we used uh, in, in, uh, by Lagrain Gris and also by Monte Col, it's, it's blended between a part of big oak cask, about 4,000, the size is about 4,000 liters. And, and about the classic barrique. And so it's, uh, it's, we don't want to have a too strong oak influence also. I, that's, I applaud that and I notice that with the wine, it's very subdued, the wood. I've had some examples of the wine from other producers that what I like to call kind of supercharged, kind of, you know, extremely ripe, extremely concentrated, a lot of oak to it, and that gets some people excited. I don't think that they're very good food wines. I don't think they're very well balanced. If people like that, that's fine. But yours is much it's, more. It's, it's, I agree. It's a different way, no? Right. I, some uh, like Pinot Noir. Also, I like the balance. Also, I want to drink a bottle. I want to finish the bottle. Exactly. And when I have a good, when I have fantastic, when I have a fantastic dish or a great, a great piece of meat or, or something else. I like when the wine going close to the dish, don't go over the dish. When I have maybe too strong oak influence, maximum of extract of, so that's, so that's for me more a wine from meditation. I like to drink sometimes uh, these wines too, but that's our, Tom, I agree with you. That's our sometimes not, not wines what going gently with food. They, they, they destroy sometimes, uh, they are too strong sometimes for, for a very tasty uh, meat or, or also, other, also other dishes. Right. Well, we have just a couple of minutes left. Uh, let's talk yes. briefly about, with Lagrine. First of all, the yeah. Lagrine okay. people should know the regular Lagrine or this, I'm sorry, not regular, but the... So, so, you know, so it changed. Um, change your mind about rosé no but when we talk about like rosé 
you see the color you you see the color of like i know it's right. it's 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 very dark no right. so the rosé is also quite dark that's not a lightly provence rosé that's that's a little bit stronger so so you need to to understand it this this also when you when you eat some especially this is a food rosé that's also to make food matches as i remember i was in a two stars michelin restaurant and and he he put me the rosé to addition the first moment i was shocked you no know, in a two star michelin restaurant rosé right right it's not it's it's and he made me um it's like i don't uh, know in english it's carne cruda you, it's what you eat in piemont it's yeah yeah it's like tartar yeah. it's like tartar it's a raw raw beef yeah, right with with quail egg and right. he put the rosé together and this was incredible wow. this was a fantastic match you no know? but you need a rosé what is a little bit a, a little bit richer a little bit more complex not too much but a little bit more complex and this this lagrain and the rosé of lagrain is a little bit richer it has a little bit more power and uh, not too much but but incredible when you want to make a food match or also when you 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 have this rosé uh, by a good barbecue it's fantastic no agreed Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm saving mine for the weekend. It's, it's, we've had a nice, mild few days here in Chicago, but it's going to get hot again. So it'll be perfect for rosé on the weekend. So that's what I'm saving mine. Absolutely. Mind. <laughs> so we have just a minute left or two, but t tell us briefly about this year, 2020. How's the growing season going? How, how are we looking at the harvest? So we have, uh, we have generally, it's, it's uh, we have, we don't, we, we have we don't have frost we have now quite perfect vegetation looks 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 a good vintage but uh it's it's uh the vineyards are in, in, in generally in great balance but now we have uh perfect rain uh and 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 uh not too warm so in the first uh, the, the the vintage starts very early I mean, in the springtime, uh, we start uh, the, the wine start very early and we suppose from the springtime on, we have a very early harvest, but we have a very cold June. And also uh, now August, uh, we have last week also uh, temperature, especially in the night, uh, we, we, we have less, minimum four degrees Celsius less than a normal okay. year. So now going back slow, and that's fantastic. So we we coming to a regular uh, harvest time, and but now it's also depends also how it's going the weather. When it's going uh, going bad weather can going difficult. When the weather now it's perfect, but these next three weeks are essential for the for the harvest too. But now uh, looks 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 very good looks very good but but uh, depends See. a lot from the next weeks no right. so we don't this year we don't have hail we we are quite happy about it. right well fingers crossed for a yes very successful yes. harvest so this yes, has been yes. great klaus i that we just catching up again but just speaking for everybody i mean you're a wealth of information you're a great speaker very engaging so this it made my job easy and um, I thank know. you. I, I, I learn my English by the street, so I never learn in the school. So I hope everyone can understand me and I try to explain. But my mother language, you know, it's German and we speak Italian. So, but, but uh, I, hope, I hope you can understand me. Um, no, your, your English was excellent. So, uh, it, it, thank probably you. Probably better than many of us. So, so thank you again. And um, thank uh, you. Hopefully, I'll be able Thank to visit. You. Hopefully, they'll let us visit soon and I'll be able to meet good, you. Good luck for everyone, no? Okay. For this, okay. this special time. Okay. Ciao, ciao. Ciao, ciao. Ciao, ciao.